What's up everybody? Today we're going to answer a question I get all the time, which is how do I get started buying a rental property? What are the steps? I want to jump into investing in real estate. I don't know how. Well, how do I get started? Literally from step number one, we've got the nine steps on what to do and how to buy your first rental property. Step number one, we're going to get right into it. Step number one, create a goal or a strategy. Figure out your why. Figure out why you're doing this for uh, and number one, why you're doing it. And number two, how you're going to do it. So like, what's, what's the goal? What's the strategy? Is it going to be single family housing? Is it going to be a house hack in a multifamily? Is it going to be uh, a duplex living in the basement, renting out the top part? Is it going to be a burr, you know, property? And you can figure out if you don't know any of these strategies, send me a message or, or put something in the comments. I'm happy to answer it. You need to be clear on your strategy, on, on what your goal is going to be on, on how you're going to approach this. And you know, some people just jump in and then get two or three or four properties in and wonder about, okay, I've done this wrong. I got to go back to square one. If that's you, if you bought a couple that, you know, now don't align with your, your values, don't make any sense. It's all good. But back to the beginning, what's the strategy? What do I want to do here? Like, what am I going to focus on? And that might take some research. That might take some, some due diligence. It might take some listening to podcasts. It might take some YouTube videos. It might take a little bit of, of time and effort and that's okay. Figure out, you know, getting clear on what's my strategy. What's my goal here? What do I want this to look like in five years? And then maybe reverse engineer it from there. Whether it's cash flow, whether it's, you know, a buy and hold strategy, whether it's, you know, doing some, some burrs to get a few places with a limited amount of cash as you go. Maybe it's flips, although flips, a little bit different for me. I don't know if I would jump into flips right away without having uh, a track record of buying a few places first and having a few and having a little bit of equity and having some wealth, having some money saved aside. Flips can go sideways real quick. And if you run out of money on your first one, and then you're in the hole because you lost some money on the flip. Your whole your whole strategy of building a portfolio is now dead. So I don't know that I'd start with a flip. It can be done, but I think you know you'd you'd want to figure out a strategy that's going to allow you to build some long term wealth first. Build a portfolio first. Get some equity build up. Get some wealth creation. Uh, get some cash flow going. Build an emergency fund, and then dive into the flip. So getting ahead of myself here, but pick a direction. You don't want to be wandering around. Is the, is the number one thing. Just just pick a direction. What's my strategy going to be? What am I going after? Spend some time figuring out what you think it is and then just do it. Number two, what are those going to look like? If I say to myself, I want to do single family homes, if I want to do uh, duplexes, if I want to do conversions where I, you know, buy a bungalow and put a, put a unit in the basement and I live in the basement and rent the top out or vice versa, what do the numbers look like? What, how do I want that? What, like, what's that look like? What's the math? What's the property going to rent for? What's the property tax going to cost? What's the insurance going to cost? What's my overhead going to cost? What's my maintenance? What's my vacancy rate? What's my property management fee going to cost me? There's plenty of good spreadsheets out there. Hit me up if you want one. I can send you one. But start to do the math on what your deal is. Um, basically like a business plan for new business. You wouldn't open up a pizzeria or a, you know, a retail shop and not know what your numbers are supposed to look like for the first couple of years, right? You can project them in. And with a retail store, you'd have no idea if you did it, whether or not it's going to actually come to fruition. Whereas with a property, it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward to say, look, this is what the rents are going to be in the area. This is what the average price is of the property. This is what the average, this is what my mortgage payment is going to be. This is what my uh, insurance cost is going to be. This is what my uh, overhead is going to be, you know, every month. You can get a pretty good idea of what this is going to look like and then run the numbers and go, okay, this is what I'm after. So that would be step two is really know what you're what you're looking for and then build essentially a business plan for rental property. Like this is what I want to do. This is going to be my business. Uh, there's a bonus tip. Tip 2.5, treat it like a business. Don't buy this and just think that I'm like, I'm a landlord now. Everything's going to be great. I'm just going to put someone in there and everything's going to work out. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't it, It's not it's not how it goes. You've got to do it like a business. So, you know, run the numbers, get the spreadsheets, do your due diligence, figure out how this is going to work and then what's it going to look like. Number three. Find a mentor. You got to find someone who's been down there before, been done what you've done. Whether there's someone out there has done this single family, multifamily, house hacking, the burr property, like flipping, whatever. Someone's done it. Um, you know, go find them. And uh, there's so many tools now YouTube and, and podcasts. Podcasts are huge, but just knowing someone face to face, whether that's Zoom or not, like it could be someone across the country that a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a buddy of an uncle of a friend knows. Just Go, you know, figure out how to get in contact with them. Got to buy someone lunch, do it. Got to buy them dinner, do it. Got to take them out for drinks, do it. Got to spend like three months figuring out how to meet this person. Go do that so that you have someone that can guide you. Find a guide. Um, it's super important that you find that person who's done it before so you don't make the mistakes that they made. 
Um, you know, because the number one thing is you can't do it alone. If you do, you're going to make a ton of mistakes that could be avoided. So just reach out there and find out who that mentor is. Uh, find someone who's going to, who's done it the way you want to do it. And then just copy and paste, you know, success leaves clues as they say. So, so go take advantage of that. Number four, start to check your credit, start to look at, you know, what's my credit score? How much money do I have? Have I talked to a mortgage broker? Am I pre-approved? Figure that part out. It sounds stupid simple, but you've got to get uh, in touch with a mortgage broker that knows rental properties, that knows investing, that actually invests on their own. Like number one question I would ever ask a mortgage broker, are you a real estate investor? If they say no, see you later. Nice talking to you. Probably a good mortgage broker. Might know how to get me a house, you know, whatever, but they're not going to be able to build an overall strategy that I'm going to need. If you're going to buy one, you're probably going to buy three or five or whatever you're not going to just buy one. Like if you're going to get any good at this at all, if you're trying to build a, a, a wealth creating life defining portfolio, which most people are, you're probably not gonna buy one place, which means you need a strategy. You need someone who knows what they're doing. You need that person who's going to be able to tell you, here's what we start with. Here's your, like, here's my goals. Here's let's work backwards. Here's what I'm after. Um, and let them go to work for you. And it's not always about the rate. It's not always about, what you know what bank you're with there's a whole thing here that has to happen there's a whole strategy you got to talk to the right ones if you need a recommendation let me know put it in the comments or send me a dm i'll send you a few that that are great that i work with but you've got to find a mortgage broker that actually knows what he's doing so check your credit check how much money you actually have access to talk to the broker and figure out what the move's going to look like what you can you know get pre-approved for and then you can actually start hunting number five you got to know the market you got to run the deals you got to search for them daily. You got to find yourself someone who knows the market. This is where you might want to loop on a real estate agent in someone who, again, like the mortgage broker, find a real estate agent. That's an investor, someone who's got some doors, someone who's done this before, someone who's been down the road, but know the market, start studying the market, start, you know, talk to that agent and figure out how do you, how can you prepare me? So, you know, send me as much information as like, as you can, all the sold data, the comparables of what you're thinking of, what area you're looking for study that market so that you know what upside on and backwards, what the rents go for, what the average property goes for, what the after repair value of a property that gets fixed up looks like versus one that isn't, you know, what, what the changes are from neighborhood to neighborhood, like spend some time. Again, it's like you're running a business, right? We got to, we got to, what are your competitors doing? What, if you're running a store, again, running a retail store, you, what's the guy across the mall doing? What's that guy over there doing? Like you'd want to know what's the average cost for this product. What's the average cost for that product? What's the average sale price of this? You wouldn't just go into a blind and go, okay, I'm opening up, you know, Foxy socks. Here it comes. Let's do Foxy socks. We're gonna do socks for 10 bucks a pair. Well, if every average pair of socks is three bucks in your neighborhood, you're not gonna make any money. You're not gonna sell any socks. It's a hell of an analogy, but you've gotta know what the heck you're doing. You gotta know, you know, um, what the market is and, and what the lay of the land is and what the neighborhood looks like. Number six is build an emergency fund. Build a fund on the side, emergency fund, uh, cushion, call it whatever you want, reserve fund. You need to have one of these. Too many investors I see start off with one, you know, the first property, second property, third property. You run into some problems and I mean, you know, they're going to come, but they're not necessarily going to be enormously expensive or huge, but a couple small ones real quick and a quick period of time. And all of a sudden, you know, it's in a big outlay of cash or one big thing happens, big outlay of cash, or you get a few small ones, you you know, you spend that money on some repairs, another great opportunity comes up and you don't have the buffer because you didn't have enough put aside. So now that you know you're doing this, spend a few months, even a year, whatever, save up as much as you can. So you've got a nice, big, fat emergency fund, the bigger, the better. So you can handle the ups and downs. You're not going to be worried about filling it with a tenant that maybe isn't exactly who you want to be putting in there because you can't afford to have more than one or two months, uh, you know, empty vacancy. So have a big, uh, you know, a big war chest, a big sack of cash is going to help you a lot along the way. Finally, the last tip, Take action. You got to start making offers. You've decided what your goal is. You know what that's going to look like. You've done the due diligence. You've found an agent. You found a broker.